The view from their window doesn't show much, a few buildings, an empty street and parked cars. But for Williams Ikechuku and Victory Eke, Nigerian students who fled the war in Ukraine, the view is their window to peace. They've been staying at a hotel in Warsaw, but they're running out of money. The day after watching Nigerian evacuees reunite with their families in Abuja, I asked how they felt about the effort. When we heard about the evacuation planes coming in via uh, Nigeria through Air Peace and mm. the Nigerian embassy here in Poland, there was a, a big rush of people who wanted to get on those planes and evacuate out. Were you ever supposed to be on those planes? Did you want to go? What is your plan? I am not going to be part of it. I never actually thought of going with them. So my plan is to stay here in Poland or move to another country because I want to go back to Ukraine. I am a 50 medical student, so going back to Nigeria is a... Um, is, uh, in fact, I can't even, like, I can't even like, um, talk about that. Like, so I decided, like I, I said, no, I'm not going to go. So we are all praying for the best, like for the, like, the conflict between the two nations to end so that we can actually like, return back to Ukraine. Because first of all, studying like, for five years, since 2017, is not something um, that I would just want to like, let's go. It's like five years of my life studying like medicine. So we are praying that the war is going to end so that we can return back home. But for the meantime, uh, we are still here um, in Poland um, and um, um, hoping that everything will be, um, we come back to like, um, like everything will normalize so that we can just return back home and continue our studies. Well, I think uh, it's much more easy, better for me to watch it out, at least for the meantime. But I'm just planning to maybe shake and wait around maybe a week or two just to know um, if the war um, ends up subsiding. But um, if the war doesn't stop, I think maybe I might just have to go back to Nigeria. Uh, I don't just know, I don't know about that yet, but uh, we're all praying that the war just ends, that there'll be a ceasefire because we all just want back, just want to go back to, um, to, to, to our school, just to, con to continue our normal lives. Nobody wants to be running around in Poland sometimes and it's just as if they don't really want you there. So nobody wants to feel that when everyone wants to everyone wants to go back to Ukraine and feel at home. If you don't want to return to Nigeria and it's your intention to wait out what's happening, what will you do? Where will you go? We are planning to like um, move to Germany if um if um they are uh if they were coming like um the Ukrainian and like the student from Ukraine. We are also like planning to move to Germany to see if uh, we can actually like um, or minimize or cut um, like the cost of living uh, by um, like getting assistance from like maybe some um, um, some NGO firms and, um, and and or some relative or something like that. So it's important to note that Williams and Victory do not speak for all of the Nigerian students who fled the war. Many of them who remain under the supervision of the Nigerian embassy here in Poland are still hopeful that another evacuation flight will be announced soon. But for Williams, Victory and the rest of their eight member group, they'll continue searching for a way out before making their way back in to Ukraine, no matter how long it takes. Adifemi Akinsanya, Arise News, Warsaw. And for an update on uh, this particular development, we can now uh, speak to our rights correspondent uh, from Poland, speaking about uh, our dear Femi uh, Kinsania, who we've just seen that report from. Femi, thank you for being here. But alongside Femi, right here in Abuja in the studios, we also have Jessica Uku Mwaga, who is a mother of one of the students who is still stranded in Ukraine. Well, Jessica, I'll come to you in the studio. But Femi, I want to pick up from where your report actually let off there, where those students say, they don't want to come back, but one wonders what are the opportunities really that are available for them to actually migrate to other parts of Europe? They're very, very few and far between. As we heard uh, the two students say, you heard William say that as it stands now, their next journey, the next thing that they're focusing on is crossing in, over into Germany. And that's not, uh, you know, an isolated incident. Many of the uh, refugees from Nigeria who I've been speaking to uh, have also said that they have 
already crossed into Germany or that's something that they're wanting to do in the coming days. It's believed that they think that Germany has a far more welcoming stance when it comes to refugees and African refugees. So for these students who've faced uh, persecution, uh, racism, threats of violence, uh, there is definitely a desire to stay in Europe for as long as possible, but cross over into a country like Germany where they feel they'll receive better treatment. And it's more than just a, an outright refusal of wanting to come to Nigeria because they hate Nigeria. It's the fact that they have invested so much time and effort into their studies that truly these young, these young people, these young students just want to see if this war would end soon. And if it does end soon, then best case scenario, they believe they'll be able to return to their homes in Ukraine and continue their studies. And it's, it's not clear whether or not that's going to be an option. One thing we do know is that many people are still desperately trying to leave Ukraine. Well, Femi, with, of course, looking at the fact that bridges are being burned, you know, people getting around, well, hearing it's getting a bit more difficult. But Femi, we'll come back to you there in Poland. But let me bring in Jessica right now. Um, Jessica, you have a daughter who is still stuck in Ukraine. Can you talk to us? When was the last time you spoke to her? Is she in a safe bunker or how is she faring? Um, presently, I spoke, the last time I spoke with her was uh, at about 4 p.m. Nigerian time. I tried calling her before I entered the studio, but her network was not connecting based on the fact that the electricity and every other thing is not working. Every day they live their life in fear based on the explosions and the missiles that is being shedding through their roofs and so on and so forth. And they had to take shelter in the bomb shelter. Right. And, you know, while taking shelter, but do you know if she's made any attempt to, um, you know, find her way to some of those safe areas? Uh, just like Femi is there in Poland. That, that's one of the places designated by the Nigerian authorities to lift the students. Has she made, her, has she made any attempt Severally. to find her way there? Yes, severally, yes. Today, they continued making an attempt to see if they can leave Sumi. But it been, it's been very difficult for them to leave based on the facts according to the students not just my daughter because for me to communicate with them i do not just communicate with my daughter alone i do an open call to all of them because as a mother i believe that their mental health is very very important so i try to talk with every one of them to console them to talk to them tell them do this do that do one or two things to see if people will be able to get out of sumi as of yesterday, they actually got somebody that agreed to take them to Portova. But after discussing with the guy, make some deposit of some certain amount of money to the guy. They called the guy today in the morning by 7.30 a.m. The guy refused answering their calls. They got another person at about 12 o'clock who agreed that each every one of them will make a deposit of $600 before he'll be able to take them to Portova. But after some time, he called them back again and said he will not be able to go. So at about 4 o'clock Nigerian time, she called me again and said they got somebody. But the guy said each every one of them will pay $1,000 for him to be able to convert them down to Port Over. But that still hasn't happened just It hasn't yet. happened. Well, Femi, let me co uh, come back to you right now. You've just heard her story. And, of course, earlier on, there was a video that circulated online concerning students alleging that they are being used as human shield and not allowed to leave Ukraine. What are you hearing on ground where you are? Well, what I'm hearing is that is very much an accurate depiction of the state of affairs for many of the students still trapped in Ukraine. Williams and Victory, both of the gentlemen who appeared in my report, weren't uh, too far away from uh, the shelling in Sumi. Uh, and they were obviously also experiencing that uncertainty, that level of fear. They too were having to leave uh, in, in bunkers, go out for a few minutes, hear sirens, and then have to run indoors. And as um, the, the mother of the student in the, studio, in the studio with you there said, it is taking a toll on their mental health. So it is a very, very sad situation for many of these students to hear that they're being used as human shields and to hear that there is so much hope and sometimes you'll feel as though you might be on the, you know, on the edge of being able to finally break free only to be disappointed again 
And that was also the experience of both Williams and Victory. They said that they had to lean on many locals, many Ukrainian locals who would offer to drive them across uh, borders or, or support them. And at the very last moment, they'd have to pull back or disappoint those students. And these are people who are in freezing conditions. Uh, both of them telling me that when they were making their journey from Ukraine to the border, they were wearing layers upon layers of, clo of clothing and still the cold was penetrating straight to their chest. So you can imagine for people still trapped in Ukraine, what that means for them. On the other hand though, it, it's, it's almost admirable the level of dedication they have to still try and see if they think or if it will in fact happen that this war will come to an end in the coming days. It's unlikely that that is going to be the case, but it just shows the, the resilience for many of these students who are dedicated to getting back to school and continuing their studies. However, that is a choice that these people are going to be ma making if you have the privilege of being able to cross into safety. For the people in Ukraine, the students still trapped there, they don't have the privilege of saying, well, actually, I might rather stay in Europe rather than go to Nigeria. Their first priority is to get out of harm's way, get out of Ukraine. And it's a very difficult situation. Even before the evacuation attempts had begun, there was going to be a very difficult journey in terms of uh, Nigerians outside of the country being able to get into Ukraine and bring them out into safety because of the land borders, because of the city borders, uh, and because of the air closures. So it's a very, very tense situation. And the, the parents in the, in the studio there has all of my empathy and sympathy because that is definitely uh, a very accurate depiction of what's going on here in Eastern Europe. Right. And Jessica, I want to bring you in right now. Um, you've heard Femi right there. But how anxious are you to welcome your daughter back home and the Nigerian efforts so far in terms of trying to evacuate, you know, the students and Nigerians in general there in Ukraine? I want you to talk about that, really. As a mother, my heart bleeds. If there's any way I can fly down to Sumi to pick my daughter I will not hesitate I'll take the bullet for her not just my daughter but other international students the situation they are right now is one a mother cannot bear most of them for three days have not baited and they are majorly girls. I'm not even talking about baiting, I'm talking about water to drink, food. They lack the basic necessities of life. I am pleading to all the people involved, the foreign affairs minister, as many people that can hear me to find a way to pull our children out of Sumi. That is all I can say. Femi, let me come back to you right now. Um, as it stands right now, I do know that there was a ceasefire between Russia and Ukraine, especially in Mariupol. Is there a chance, or are you hearing anything in terms of, you know, maybe some sort of ceasefire in some areas where we still have some international students being stuck? And what are the authorities saying in terms of trying to get those who are still stuck in Ukraine to these safe zones to be lifted back home? If we start with Mariupol, if you look at a map of Ukraine and Russia, you'll know that Mariupol is very close to the eastern side of Ukraine and therefore very, very close to Russia. So that there is a ceasefire over that end of the country is welcome news, but it, it doesn't have much bearing on the students still trapped in Sumi because they are still um, towards the, the northern part of the country and still very much close to Russia too, where there is still ongoing fighting, where they do continue to hear the sirens, where they are hearing shelling. So it's a different situation geographically, but uh, on the whole of it, it's still very grave. And so when we look at places like Romania, Hungary, Slovakia, Poland, which have become safe havens for students, if they're lucky enough to cross through, 
and cross over, there is effort, there is, there, there is uh, the presence of the Nigerian government at all of those countries wanting to welcome as many people as possible. I've spoken to the Nigerian ambassador over in Slovakia, and she told me that she is currently facing a huge issue in terms of the students who have crossed over into safety in Slovakia trying to